In Texas, Saronic Technologies is building something the U.S. Navy hasn't had in decades. Speed. Real industrial speed. Port Alpha is America's first naval shipyard designed specifically to mass-produce autonomous warships. And it's already in motion. Backed by over $600 million in recent funding and a total valuation of $4 billion, Saronic is delivering vessels faster than any traditional defense contractor in the game. No delays, no bottlenecks. Just a fleet of fully autonomous surface combatants, engineered to deploy without crews, without hangars, and without the need to ever go dark. The logic is simple. China has numbers, America needs speed. While Beijing pushes out over 350 ships, Port Alpha is being built to close that gap without waiting a decade. Modular construction, AI-driven production lines, naval autonomy built for frontline deployment, not testing labs. The Navy isn't treating this as a science experiment. These ships are entering real-world contracts. They're preparing for the Pacific. This is Port Alpha. Let's walk through what it's building, one vessel at a time. 6. Spyglass Six feet of trouble that fits where manned boats can't. Think pocket-sized picket ship. Slip it off a beach, kick it from a R-hib, or run it as a wolf pack and watch comms nets light up. Spyglass hauls up to 40 pounds, sprints at 20 knots, and roams 30 nautical miles, enough for harbor denial, pier-side mischief, or swarming reconnaissance that makes a patrol boat's watch officer spit his coffee. It's small, modular, and recoverable by larger ships. The whole point is speed of tasking and the price of admission. One crate, one problem solved. Origin story matters. A former naval officer built the first unit in a garage to prove a point. Deliver steel, not slides. Spyglass became Saronic's calling card. Real hull, real autonomy, real missions. Showing the Navy that startup cadence can produce useful combat power. Why size wins. At six feet, Spyglass noses into mangrove cuts, marina alleys, pier shadows, the clutter where bigger holes get shy and sensors get noisy. Launch from shore, a workboat, or a mothership, recover, refit, and relaunch within hours. Tempo is the weapon. Speed meets survival. 20 knots in a tiny hull is lively. Accelerate, reposition, vanish behind harbor traffic. Inside a 30 nautical mile bubble, it completes the whole loop. Ingress, snoop, sting, exfil. Without theater, punch above weight, 40 pounds buys options, EO slash IR for target ID, compact EW to poke comms, a demolition charge for peers or prop fouling, even a loitering round when back off needs punctuation. It's a micro dagger, quick in, clean out. Five, cutlass. The bigger brother with sharper elbows. 14 feet, 200 pounds of payload, and a 300 nautical mile reach means Cutlass stops being a demo toy and starts acting like a network node. It can seed smaller drones, build an adaptive command and control mesh, and classify or track surface nasties while staying outside the splash zone. Same 20 knot top end, far longer legs, 10 times spyglasses range. What the frame buys you, autonomy with eyesight. Cutlass carries its own mast and radar, so it doesn't just take orders. It sees, tracks, classifies, and holds a target thread without a human babysitter. The brains ride in a microservices stack with open modularity, which means payloads swap like phone apps, EO slash IR today, EW tomorrow, loitering munition rack on Friday. Proven mischief. In joint drills like IBP 24.1, Cutlass launched Altius loitering munitions at sea, mid-ocean, clean handoff, no fuss. That's not a science fair. That's a afloat missile caddy doing work in blue water. Operator cadence is simple. Launch from a pier or mothership, roll a corridor at 20 knots, seed sensors, pass tracks, and if the word comes, pop a loitering bird. Recover, swap the box, send it back. Cutlass is the middleweight that holds the ring. Too small to tempt a missile shot, too useful to ignore and perfectly rude to anything that wanders into its lane. 4. Corsair 24 feet of multi-mission attitude. Corsair goes past 35 knots, carries roughly 1,000 pounds, and stretches beyond 1,000 nautical miles, which means real persistence and proper punch. Use it to tow sensors, shadow a frigate, 
or park a surprise under someone's horizon. What the frame buys you. Depth and endurance. With 1,000 nautical miles in the tank, Corsair graduates from beach work to blue water. It can sit on station for days, patrol a sea lane end to end, or hand off between task groups without begging a tow. The hull is built around a modular bay. Rack the kit you need, from sonar arrays and EO slash IR masts to compact EW sets, radar packages, or a lightweight offensive rack. On one run, Corsair plays quartermaster, slinging spares, fuel canisters, even a full parts locker to a unit that can't break station. Next run, it grows a fake mustache and does decoy work, towing emitters and radar reflectors to puff a bigger signature and burn the enemy's targeting cycle. Flip the loadout and it's a strike caddy, carrying loitering munitions, ready to pop a bird the second a track turns hostile, while the mothership keeps its VLS cells politely closed. When the job is quiet, it goes sensor dragger, streaming a sonar, laying buoys, stitching a real-time picket line across the water. And when you need a shadow, Corsair tucks in at 35 plus knots, pacing a frigate, mirroring her turns, and keeping eyes on contact sniffing just beyond the horizon. Three, Mirage. Now we're into ship size silhouettes, 40 feet long and comfortable operating like a man craft for broad tasking, maritime security, picket duty, deception ops, or escort in a mixed crude uncrewed screen. Mirage has 2,000 nautical miles in the tank, tops 35 plus knots, and can lug up to 2,000 pounds of bang if the brief turns kinetic. It's the kind of platform you assign sectors to, not errands. Pair two of them and they write their own patrol pattern, while your destroyer keeps its magazines fresh. What the frame buys you is command presence without the crew bill. Mirage runs the same browser-based command layer and mission-level AI as its smaller cousins, so you don't retrain the fleet, just scale the hull and the appetite. The modular lanes take serious kit. A medium radar array for surface tracking, a tall EO slash IR mast for positive IDs, compact EW for signals deception, or a rack of loitering munitions when observe and report needs teeth. In escort, it runs wingman, screening a frigate, mirroring turns at 35 plus knots, and handing off threats to shooters with the calm of a croupier. Two mirages become a habit, three become a net. They cross queue, trade tracks, and rotate station on that 2,000 nautical mile leash, so your high value hulls keep fuel, crews, and missiles for the fight that matters. Sector assigned, sector secured. Two, Cypher. 60 feet, 10,000 pounds of payload, over 35 knots, 3,000 nautical miles. Cypher isn't a boat. It's a quiet problem set for anyone watching the plot board. It swallows a full 20-foot ISO container, plugs it to ship power, and moves the kit you'd rather not risk sailors on. Comms, EW, medical, spares, even a pallet of drones. Numbers on the table, length, 60 feet, approximately 18 meters. Top speed, 35 plus knots approximately 65 kilometers per hour. Range, 3,000 nautical miles, approximately 5,500 kilometers. Payload, 10,000 pounds, 4.5 metric tons. And yes, it handles a standard 20-foot ISO. No bespoke racks, no drama. So whatever lives in a container can live on Cypher. What the frame buys you is industrial utility at fleet speed. A lot of cargo hauls plod. Cypher runs with frigates, changes sectors between dawn and lunch, and threads into places a replenishment ship won't. Roll on an EW can, a sensor lab, a drone magazine, or a pop-up workshop with printers, spares, and a bench tech. Roll off when the task is done. Same browser-based control and mission-level AI as the smaller holes. So you don't teach a new dog old tricks. Just scale the payload and hit deploy. How it plays out at sea. In contested waters, Cypher is the ghost forklift. It sprints ahead of the convoy, caches fuel bladders and parts on a speck of reef, then loops back to hand off a strike package from its container bay. It runs repair kits to a damaged patrol craft without costing you a crew transfer. It shadows a task group at 35 plus knots, acting as a roaming magazine for loitering munitions and a relay tower for the swarm. After a cyclone, it shows up with a medical ISO, generators humming, and clean water gear in the other half of the bay. 1. Marauder The king of them all? 
This is Marauder, 150 feet of unmanned persuasion, range about 3,500 nautical miles, around 18 knots top speed, payload measured in 40 metric tons, and deck space for two 40-foot ISOs, or four 20-footers. You can float missiles, mines, radar kits, fuel bladders, repair shops, an entire pop-up mission module into places a carrier group won't risk. Park it on a choke point, lend it to a task force, or let it play quartermaster for your unmanned phalanx. When the brief says heavy, Marauder says how much. What the frame buys you is industrial leverage. Most logistics hulls plead for escorts. Marauder runs with them. It moves at task group pace, holds a sector, then quietly shifts the whole problem set 500 miles overnight. Roll on an EW van, a radar node, a drone magazine, a field workshop, or a medical ISO with generators humming. Roll off when done. Same autonomy stack as the smaller boats, so your controllers don't learn a new dialect. Just assign a bigger job. Scale is the headline. The keel goes down in Franklin, Louisiana. Golfcraft reborn as Saronic's rapid MUSV line. Backed by roughly $250 million in upgrades, aimed at turning out up to 50 autonomous vessels per year. That's how you turn a single heavy hauler into a fleet posture. One on station, one outbound, one inbound. And your logistics problem starts solving itself. So, should Port Alpha be all that it promises to be, it would no doubt birth an entire fleet of autonomous ships that would shoot the capabilities and numbers of the US Navy to glorious numbers that overcome even China. All the pieces are ready and in place to bring Port Alpha to life. Except one thing. They need you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. So, kindly do that now. And thanks for watching.